Hello friends and welcome back to yet another video in the ethical hacking series. In the last video we learned how we can use Burp Suit to intercept any HTTP request. In this video I'll share with you how you can modify the intercept request to send a modified request to the server. For example, if I'm accessing any XYZ website and I'm trying to log into that website and when I use the form to log in, I fill in the email, the password and some other fields and then the request takes those credentials to the backend. Now what I can do is I can intercept the request in between and modify those credentials and then forward them to the server. That way you can modify the HTTP requests that are created using the front-end application towards the backend and intercept them in between and modify them and then let them go to the backend. So the backend will feel like, okay, this is the request. This is the original request that the front-end generated. So let's see how we can do this. So I've already opened Burp Suit. This is the Burp Suit and this is the Chromium browser that comes with Burp Suit. You can click on the open browser button to open the browser. Like we covered in the last video as well, intercept is off. This button is used to intercept the request. Once the request is intercepted, you can use the button forward to forward it to let it go to the server and drop to drop a particular request. Okay, so once again, let's just switch the intercept on. Now it has started intercepting the request. Now let's click on this join now button. So as you can see, the request got intercepted. It was going to the register.php page, but it got intercepted in between. And we can also see that there are some request query params that are set. Now this is a small example, but this is similar to what generally happens. For example, if you have an e-commerce website where you want to add to cart some product, and when you click on the add to cart button, uh, the product is added to the cart with product details like, you know, uh, some SKU number of the product or, you know, some product ID and the price of the product, etc. So once that request is released from the front end to the back end, okay, you know, add this information to the cart, we can intercept those requests also using Burp Suit and maybe modify the request and then set into backend. So a lot of things can we do. You have to be curious, you have to be creative how you can use this particular feature to intercept different requests, modify them and let it go to the backend and let the backend think, okay, this is an original request. So let's see how we can do it. So this is the basic setting page on Study Tonight's website. If I start intercept on on this and if I want to update the request, for example, the display name, etc., all this information can be updated using this page. So if I click on save changes, the request got intercepted, it's going to this page and the request method is post and here are the request body parents like you can see Abhishek Alawat and this now let's just change this, let's write here Tony Stark, enter and let this request go ahead forward change is successfully saved intercept off as you can see the name got changed to Tony Stark so the actual request although uh, you know the request that we created was uh, taking the name Abhishek but we intercepted the request in Burp Suit and we changed the name so the final request that was sent to the backend took this name and this name got saved in the backend now this is a very basic example uh, there are more complex things that you can do using this and this is something that you know it's affecting you only and you can actually update your profile using this particular form as well so why would you bother using burp so to intercept the request and then modify the request so that is just to you know show you how things can be done what other pages that are being accessed what are the things that you know a website is using on the network side to understand what the user is doing if I forward it, so this is the page for username. Uh, you know, if I intercept is on, if I click on save changes, all fields are required. So this is something that is handled on the user face itself. There was no network call that was made. Uh, let me just, you know, make usernames to not enter. Okay. Now, if I see that, you know, this is the user request that is being sent. And these are the new username and the, uh, you know, the username, what the request params the post method is taking. And like I said, you know, I can edit it easily from here, but let's not edit it. And if I click on drop request, the request gets dropped immediately. Nothing will be changed. As you can see, you know, the username is still I am Abhishek because I dropped the request. So that's how you can intercept an HTTP request that's going out from a front end or from the client side on the browser to the server backend. And you can even modify it. 
so you can all you have to do is once again to revise you have to put intercept is on then you can see all the request being made and once you get into the forward section you see the request and in the so let me just do it for you so intercept is on i you know for example refresh this page i get to see okay this is the you know the request that is being made and I cannot see the request and body buttons right now. But once you click on anything, for example, I click on save changes. All fields are required. Let me just go to profile again. Forward, forward, forward. Yes. If I click on save changes, you'll see that every request takes some body button. If it's a form submission, for example, if it's a post request. So it will take some body buttons, right? So here you can see full name, word, me, etc. And you can change this and you can, you know, let the request flow like a usual request. So this is how you can use verb suit to intercept requests and then modify the request parameters to, you know, play around with stuff. Now I would request you to use all this sensibly. Do not play around with applications because that's, uh, you know, not good practice. And if you want to become an ethical hacker, you have to be responsible in, you know, testing various applications that are out there. And uh, yeah, so I'm trying my best to explain it using StriteWire.com. We have tested it, but I would request you again to not use or overuse StriteWire.com to test anything. You can pick up any other website or, you know, create a blog of yourself using WordPress maybe and then, you know, try different hacks or different techniques on that. With this, let's end this video. See you in the next video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.